Hey, what's up everybody? After scouring YouTube, I found that there is still a problem. Even after all the shipping videos there are out there, people are still asking about setup, about what boxes to use, etc. In today's video, I'm going to show you my setup and see if it works for you. Let's get started on looking around my space. First of all, you have your shipping area. This is my table. If you notice that there is a lot of cuts and gashes and all that right here. Oh. It's what I do for you guys. Can you grab me a bandage? This has never happened before and look at the culprit. My scorer. This went under the nail. It's not it's not really bleeding that much now, but I'm going to put a bandaid on it anyways because I don't want to bleed all over my boxes or any product. It's good enough. Good enough for the video. So I'm going to show you my my table setup right here. This table I've had for a long time and it's got everything that I need. It's got entertainment on here with Bella. We lost her a couple of months ago and she stays on my pad because I want her on my pad and she's probably going to be there forever. I loved her. She was with me for about 11 years. So, but that's for entertainment purposes. I have it on this stand right here, which goes up and down and back and forth. So I can tilt it as I need to. I have shrink wrap and then this is a sealing machine for anything that needs to be sealed. And then I use my heat gun to make the shrink wrap, you know, smaller so it can be real tight. I do recommend you get a heat gun. Heat guns are awesome. You can remove stickers. You can do it. You can use it for shrink wrap. You can use it for everything. And of course you have to have power. So I put a strip right here with simple zip ties. And then I also have a square with all these connections. These connections are all necessary in my, in my processing room. Lightning for power, lightning for data transfer, USB micro and USB C. Everything that I can possibly need to charge. It's right here. It's all in one spot. What you want to do is keep everything as close as possible so you don't have to be moving around. You don't have to be looking for stuff. Everything is intuitive. So if you need something while you're doing it, it's all going to be right here. That brings me to this. I have bags. I have tape. That is shipping tape. Shipping tape is thicker because I need the boxes to not burst open. And then I have this tape. This tape is to hold boxes together while I tape them or to tape down bags. So this is very thin tape and it's also a lot cheaper. That's why I have that. This is one of the best uh, things that I have also. This is heavy-ish. What it allows me to do is do that without it moving. In here I have a letter opener, which I use as a pointer. When there's any issue with the product, I point it and I take a picture. It serves double purpose as a ruler as well. I have a Scotty peeler to remove tags. I do a lot of retail arbitrage and there's always clearance tags. I have scissors, pens, markers, and all that. I have a whole bunch of other stuff here that I'm not going to go into right now. One thing I do want to also show you is this. This shrink wrap is used when you have like, this is a, a set of plates for, there's four plates in there. I shrink wrap each individually and then I shrink wrap the whole thing. So now it's there. They're, they're in a set. They won't get lost and I won't have any issues. One other thing I have down here is trash. You always have trash. You have to have a big trash can. This is a 13 gallon. I think it's 13 gallons. Yep. Yeah. This is 13 gallons and then I have a little one. And as you can tell, I need to throw out the trash, but I just haven't because you know, this is a workspace. This is a work area. It's called my processing room. But now the biggest question that I saw online was what kind of boxes you use. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start from the bottom, from the smallest one and then go up. Everything is sort of in, in order. It goes by sizes, except for I ran out of room. So I had to put the, I had to put the little ones over here because you got to make do with what you got. This is a four by four by four, four by four by four fits a lot of the jewelry, a lot of the smaller uh, items. And then I have a six by four by four when I don't want to add too much weight, but I need the space. And then this is the most important one. The one that I use a crap ton of eight by six by four, eight by six by four fits hats. That's the number one thing. And then it fits a bunch of other product. Like I could easily throw something like that in there with bubble wrap. It's going to be tight and you got to be careful because this is glass, but you can throw something like that in there. You can throw this in there. You can throw a whole bunch of different things in there. The eight by six by four, I do recommend you get. And then we come to 12 by six by six, 12 by six by six is a big rectangle that fits a lot of different shoes, not all shoes. And depending on the size, but like say Converse, 
a bunch of tennies they fit in here and that's why i use it all the time and then moving down right here we have our flat mailers these are hard flat mailers i use them for cds i use them for pins for stickers for anything like that and this is a small one i was actually using these for the eclipse glasses that i was selling uh, a while back but i had some some leftovers these are from uline i haven't found a better place to get them for the price but so i got them from uline and i still have a few left and then we move on right here i have baggies because you i bag almost everything not everything but i bag almost everything for example if i'm going to send some rings you don't just throw them with bubble you don't just throw them with it just it looks ghetto man you got to put them in something that looks nice so they can take them out so they don't scratch each other so they don't move around so you can pack them nicely in there it needs to look nice i don't do what other people do which is um like color paper and then it says ebay and it's all pretty and it's flowery like i don't do that i'm, I'm a man i can't do that like this is weird but i use stuff like this then we come to the freebies these are from the usps and i have three freebies flat rate envelope flat rate legal envelope and then padded flat rate i recommend you get all these number one they're free so you can't complain that you can't afford them number two they're very useful i can fit most jeans in here and some sweaters some heavy shirts maybe like some denim shirts this one i've been using for ah man i don't have one in here because i just sent them out but this one i've been using for my egg mazing if you guys don't know what that is i actually showed a video of the egg mazing what what i bought and i've been shipping it out it's basically it's for easter it's an egg coloring thing for kids i put it in here and it saved me a ton because now i don't have to buy the box the padded envelope a lot of the times what i do is that i put something in here like say it's gonna something that's gonna break or it's breakable i put it in the six by four by four and then i shove this in here you might think it's overkill but it's not because it's padded in here and then once i put it into the padded flat rate envelope it gets double padded some things that i sell are very expensive but i also need to save on cost i need to save on shipping right so i do what i can and that's what i do going to the left right here i have bags for my shirts i don't have a lot of poly bags i only have that one size right now i ran out of i ran out of a larger one but this is basically for a it's for a 15 by 10 and i do have a bigger one that is so random but i got it a long time ago i gotta say though i have used these before when i send plush or when i send something like let's just say that somebody bought five shirts like five different shirts or five different jeans or five different something i just put them in here make sure that they're wrapped nicely and these things they don't tear they last you know they're, they're pretty good they last a while now moving downwards here and mind you don't don't uh don't mind any of the other stuff that's in there this is a working area i'm not just doing this you know it look, make it look all pristine for the video this is my dji mic which is very expensive mic i have a gun holster because sometimes i don't have it on my hip when i'm working here and i'm in my shorts i just put it in here and i have it i have it with me all the time just in case random phone who remembers this for those of you that are 90s babies oh what's up hey what's up guys what's up none of this this was so cool man i love the feel the the tactile feel here i have the oakley sticker in the back the samsung moment with google 3.2 megapixels camera my phone now has like a 40,000 megapixels because that's the only thing that apple can do now is add more megapixels and sell you the same phone for a thousand dollars more insane let's keep going this is a battery so in case i need to move somewhere or if i'm shooting i can be connected to the power right so i grab that cord and i plug it in here and i put it in my back pocket and then i just shoot as as i go so i can keep my phone powered this is the next one hold on one second i recommend you cut these down because if not they get all stringy and they start popping out of the trash can i use an eight by eight by eight this one i use quite a bit because i have a very special product that i sell that i've been selling since 2017 on amazon and that i sell consistently because i brought that i imported that from mexico i built the market and now it's mine that's what that's for you can also use it for a bunch of other things then we move on we have six by six by six these two are very similar and you don't have to have both but i do recommend it i have a 12 by 9 by 4 
and a 12 by 12 by 4. There's going to be a lot of things that don't require a lot of height. So the 4 inches is because it's, it's basically a flat box, but it's a large box. The good thing is that I have the 12 by 12 by 4 because I have bought a, a bunch of board games that fit in here that didn't fit in the 12 by 9 by 4. So I just want uh, options and I like having options with boxes. So I have both in here. And speaking of not needing too much space sometimes, I have a 10 by 10 by eight. This is essentially a square, but it's smaller than the bigger ones that I have over here. That's a 12 by 12 by 12. And that's a 14 by 10 by 10. After that, I don't have many more boxes unless you go to the garage and I have a few very large boxes for very, very large items. For example, the Kenwood, this Pioneer, but those boxes are much more expensive and they are heavy duty. And I'm by heavy duty, I mean like, look at that. You see how thin that is? Okay, the heavy duty ones are two times, if not three times that size. And they're only for things that are super heavy or things that are very expensive that I wanna make sure that the from UPS or USPS or FedEx or whoever don't break them because it is your responsibility to pack properly so that it can get to the customer. Although we are insured, you know, we get paid if, if they break them. You don't want to have that bad experience, you know, for the customer. So you don't want anything to break. In the corner here, this is technically yes, it's for shipping. I have a regular printer. This is just a, a, a regular brother printer. It's black and white. I have my thermal printer, old school ass thermal printer, but I got it for nothing and it still works. I have rolls, I have small labels. These are for Amazon, these are FBA labels. There's, they're for FN SKUs, they're, so they're tiny labels. And then I have the regular large shipping labels. And then of course I got my nice MacBook Air. It is 2013. It has served me great for a long time because it's super, it's backwards, but whatever. I don't want to turn it upside down. I mean, up right side up. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that I have bubble here. This is called medium bubble. There is small bubble, medium, and large. Large is about a half an inch larger than this. They're really big. I don't use those because they take up too much space in a box. I use a lot of medium and I buy these and these kind of, this is actually a half roll. When I buy the other rolls all the way over here, last time I was here and I don't know how, I guess I hit it and it was, it was teetering. So I fell down and it, my coffee fell all over this place. We had to move everything, mop, and it was just, <laughs> but it is what it is. One other box that I use that I don't have here, it's in the garage and is a box that is similar, cameraman, that is similar to that one right there, the long box. I don't use that for shipping. That's just an Amazon box that I use for storage, but the long boxes are used for shipping things like drivers, bats, um, things that are long and skinny. I do a lot of umbrellas. I do walking canes. There's so many things that you can use, use them for. They are very expensive for sure. So you gotta be careful how many you buy. Now, let me give you a recommendation. I see a ton of videos saying things like, well, I've never paid for boxes. I never would never pay for boxes because I just go to my local grocery store and they give them to me. I go to over here and they give them to me. Okay, I get it. I understand about saving money, but what you're not understanding most people is that how long does it take you to get those boxes? You have to ask permission to get those boxes. What if those boxes smell like fruit? What if those boxes smell like something weird? What if they have a bunch of stickers and now you have to use this to remove the stickers because you don't want them to say, Bob from New York ship something to that store. And you have to, there's just so much work. The reason I do things like this and I buy boxes like this from a place called Half Price Boxes in San Antonio, Texas is because this, first of all, it, it relieves a lot of stress. Everything is where it needs to be. I already know what boxes I have. I can replenish them all the time. And for a, a, a decent cost, I don't have any issues with storage. I'll give you an example. I kept these just for you guys for this video. Look at this. Let's just say that you want to keep, oh, I keep my Amazon boxes all the time because, you know, why would you waste them? Why would you throw them away? Okay. Well, look, if you start piling up boxes, even if you put them flat, how are you going to know? 
How are you going to know what you have? How are you going to know which one to use? How are you going to know? And the most important thing, it is way more professional to ship in, say, one of these boxes that I have right here. Look at that. It's a pretty box. It has nothing on it. The only thing that it's going to have is your is the shipping tag versus shipping in a box like this. Imagine I remove the sticker, right? I remove the tape. I remove everything. And then I put my tape over it and then I ship it. That's just <laughs> man. This is look, I, I have a lot of reviews that say that it's great shipping. It's nice packaging and that I care about the sale because I do. So you have to remember there is a customer, the customer that you're selling to, the customer is at their home. When they receive it, you want them to have the best experience possible. And one thing that really bothers me about using old boxes is that they might be branded with uh, Amazon or Walmart or whatever. Okay, we are working with eBay, right? You have to be proud of who you work with. Why would you start just sending out? Why would you start? Brand, uh, sending out boxes branding somebody else's uh, company when you're working with eBay. This is the reason why eBay doesn't become a trillion dollar business like Amazon. It's because there is so many people that are just like, ah, whatever, just ship it, just ship it. Well, maybe this is why we get less money on eBay. And then when we put stuff on Amazon, we get more money on Amazon. So we need to elevate the brand. That means our brand as well as the eBay brand because that's where they're buying. If you want more sales, then do it better and then they will come to you, to your store to get more product. Does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense to me. If it makes sense to you, leave it in the comments below. And if you think I'm full <laughs> and you don't, that you think that all this is just, you should just use used boxes and just old boxes so you can save money, fine. Then let me know below. I just want to give you a different perspective on how to see business, how to look at business. A lot of the times what happens is that small business owners, you know, resellers, especially people at thrift, they think pennies. This is why they, oh my God, I don't want to pay 50 cents for a box because it's going to add 50 cents and then my margin is going to go down. They think pennies. If you think pennies, you're going to make pennies. What you want is to think dollars. If you think dollars, you're going to make dollars. You got to sell your brand differently. It's got to be better. And packaging definitely, definitely makes a big difference. Why do you think when you see Amazon, here, let me give you that example again. When Amazon sends their boxes, look at that. It's from A to Z, but that's a smiley face because it looks better. It's just branded better. I wish that I know that it's like, well, you drank the Kool-Aid, man. Well, you know what? If you're doing something, do it the best you can or don't do it at all. That's just my take on that. What you just saw is essentially my shipping area. This is all that I use. I ship pretty quickly. It's very efficient and it's very effective when I'm doing everything. Next videos that I'm going to shoot are going to be on this is ready for inventory. I'm going to shoot my light box so you guys can see how I use this light box to shoot pictures outside of the setup for clothing. And then I'm also going to shoot something specific to this. This area is the ready to process area. I hope that this helps you at least get your mind around how to set up your shipping station better, how to set up your shipping area better. And I really hope that you invest money into boxes and making everything look better. I guarantee you that it'll increase your sales because your store will look better. People will love it. You're going to get more positive feedback and it's just going to be better overall. Plus, when you start investing money in yourself, you force yourself to do more things because you're like, well, I already invested money. I have skin in the game. Now I got to come through because I said I was going to come through. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.